Great. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another LinkedIn Live. Um, we've got a very special guest this afternoon. Um, and, you know, before that, I just want to highlight the fact that we've got more webinars and um, a quiz and another LinkedIn Live happening this week. So if you want to find the details, just look on the LinkedIn profile and everything will be listed there for you. But um, this particular LinkedIn Live is in um, basically partnership with Cyber Scotland, which is happening all week. Um, and there's a lot of events happening. And myself and my guest today, JJ Davey, um, are going to talk a little bit about mental health and well-being in the industry. So JJ, would you like to introduce yourself and tell everyone about yourself? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so my name is JJ Davey. I have been within cybersecurity for roughly three years now. However, technology I've been in for the vast majority of my life. Uh, I, re I started my career in the armed forces, uh, in the Royal Signals, where i done six years learning all different technologies. Um, I then moved on to Lockheed Martin, where I was a, uh, a service desk analyst. Learned a little bit more about commercial IT there, so non uh, armed forces uh, equipment. Moved on to my first cybersecurity role as a SOC analyst for a company called Think Marble. I, I done a year there before moving my way up to a tier two analyst for Carnival UK. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I lost my job uh, there, uh, but I found another job as a cybersecurity engineer uh, for a local fintech company, and then moved on to where I currently am at CyberClan as a tier two SOC analyst. So you could say it's been quite a journey. Uh, there's been some ups and downs. I've had my fair share of uh, mental health experience, which I'm, I'm hoping I can um, help people through. If they hear my experience, I'm hoping I can help them just because they can hear a story and hopefully they can relate to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And just a little bit about myself. I'm a trustee for a mental health charity based in Aberdeen in Aberdeenshire called Shirley Space. Um, we specialize in adult mental health issues um, and we've been going for about a year now um, and we are seeing quite an increase especially in the last four months since sort of the Christmas period where we've received lots of messages um, lots of inquiries um, and actually we're getting quite a lot of donations from the community as well because I think they're seeing that there's a real need for um, community um, help um, at this time. So before I go back to JJ, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what the current government statistics are. You probably saw um, the First Minister talking about how essentially we're looking at the end of April before we return to normal services. Um, but if we look at some government statistics, it revealed that 28.8% of Scots felt high levels of psychological stress. Um, and only since October, we've seen an increase in about 3% in that. Um, and that's very much uh, how it's sort of padding out month by month. We're seeing gradual increases in the amount of mental health sufferers. Um, and, you know, whether it's women or males, we are all suffering. Um, so, JJ, would you just like to tell us a little bit more about your journey, essentially? Yeah, uh, so my journey itself was full of some um, struggles. Uh, so when I left the armed forces, I actually fell on some hard times and um, I did go through uh, therapy um, for depression. I was on antidepressants for quite a while. Um, and there was times where I felt like I couldn't break out of my own mold. I felt I was trapped in between these four walls. Uh, even going out to social kind of events and situations, I felt alone. I didn't feel like I was up to the mark when it came to jobs. I felt like I had what they call imposter syndrome quite badly. Uh, I just started comparing myself to other people. You know, people post a lot on LinkedIn about their successes. So you try and compare yourself to them. And that's kind of impacted my journey quite heavily because it made me view myself differently um, in kind of a negative light. And I think that's what happens to you when you have kind of mental health problems, you focus a lot more on the negatives and they play more heavily in your mind. And you're constantly thinking about the negative. Like, Am I good enough? Can I do this? Probably not. I'm scared of failing. And it's those kind of things that just repeat in your mind. And throughout my career, I've had that quite heavily. Uh, so I left the armed forces 
and when I joined Lockheed and I was moving on to cybersecurity, the the constant fear of failure was just playing on in my mind, going, you're not good enough, you can't do this. Um, and it was just one of those things where coming to manage it was it came quite of a task in itself. It was definitely one of the hardest battles I've ever kind of encountered was mental health. Mm. And it's one of those things where if you don't know where to go for help, it's really hard to break out of those kind of molds. Mm. And do you feel that since COVID's happened, the fact that we're remote working again, we're back in that cabin fever type atmosphere, do you feel that that has maybe had an effect on you again? Or Absolutely. So mm. I'm quite an avid gym goer. So for mm. me, that was my outlet. That was where I went to to release my stress. I went to do some boxing to go release my stress. Uh, but now I have nothing. Now it's just a case of, stuck in these four walls, waiting until, you know, the big man says, you're allowed back out. And I think for a lot of people, they've had their outlet taken away and they've either had to adapt and find a new outlet or they just like kind of, um, just kind of like, you know, just fester in their mental like, problems. So they don't have that ability to take stress out anymore. Mm -hmm. So that stress is just contained and it just compounds on each other. So, you know, you have, you've come across another problem that just sits on top of the other problem and it just compounds, compounds until eventually people just explode. They have like emotional outbreaks. And if worse comes to worse, something bad might happen. Mm -hmm. And we, we're seeing that. I've seen a study in Australia that they've seen a massive increase in, in suicide rates. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's directly linked to the start of lockdown periods. And mm -hmm. I think, people aren't used to being confined. And when you take away quite a lot of their ability to release their stress, that's when it starts to become a, a kind of a mental health pandemic because people can't release. They mm. don't have that human interaction either. That's been taken away. You know, we can't say, oh, we've had a rough week. Let's go down a pub, you know, a couple of mates. Yes. <laughs> you can't yeah. do that anymore. So you don't have that ability to go talk to your mates. I mean, yes, you have kind of video conferences software that allows you to speak to people, but it's not the same as going to going to the pub, having a nice pint, talking mm -hmm. with your mates, going, oh, having a bad week, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have that anymore. Yes, and, and I suppose this um, slides nicely into the next question. Do you feel companies and employers are supporting this fact enough? Do you think they're looking out for their employees? Because obviously with the fact that HR um, departments aren't in the same location as employees, how do you think that's having an effect? So it's, it's very difficult to, you kind of forget that HR exists after a while once you're remote working and you kind of forget that other departments don't exist. And unless you keep advertising those open channels of communication with the rest of your employees, they don't know that that exists. So when it comes to things like HR, you don't really know they exist. You don't really know that you have that support mechanism or that support bubble. You don't really know if that exists because those channels of communication aren't advertised. So companies can be doing a lot more to support people through lockdown, through these periods in regards to mental health, whether it be, I don't know, creating a, a games night every week where people come together, no work, it's just play a random game online, everyone's chatting, you know, something like that. Just try and bring a social element, get people together, uh, because that's when you need, that's where you need that connection. Mm -hmm. And it goes hand in hand with team building. And um, stuff like having channels open available to go, hey, here's a drop-in session with HR, um, or if you want a private one, just email us and we can open up a session. I think mm -hmm. having quite a readily available uh, channel of communication with HR, with your hiring, with your manager, sorry, is something that's very important for companies to do. And they need to have a lot more emphasis on well-being. So diet as well. Diet is really important. I mean, let's be honest, we're all really bad for it, especially during lockdown. We love mm -hmm. a good takeaway. Now, had a stressful day in the same room which we're working. Let's go get a let's go sit on the couch that's a couple of meters away. Let's get a takeaway. We've all done it, we're all bad for it. But bad diets actually have a bad impact on health and in, in turn mental health. So people need to realize, well, do we really, really need to be shoving our all this food down our faces? Or can companies be going, hey, here's a healthy guide to well-being, here's your top 10 tips for mm -hmm. health and well-being for the week. Just increase your water intake or go out for a walk. Or if you're going for your break, turn your computer off and go for your break. Go outside for a walk. Yeah. 
get out of the house. Yes, no, definitely. I think it's even harder if you live on a, on your own, you know, as well, because you maybe don't have the interaction at all, really, you know, that really breaks up the day. Um, even if you've got a dog or a cat or, or some, you know, form of, um, you know, um, foreign object, it, it's just nice to to know that, you know, there is something there. Um, but I can see why it affects so many people. I really can. And uh, personally, um, for me, what I've been doing is I've been listening to more music. Um, I've been watching, well, of course, we all watch Netflix now and we're all sort of embracing the, um, you know, the dramas that are on there. Um, I think it's been good to sort of um, rediscover yourself a little bit as well, because, you know, we sort of didn't think we didn't take a step back and look at ourselves really um, for a good time when we were working constantly and commuting. So it's given us the opportunity to look at our talents and look at where we're good at and potentially, you know, follow that. Some some friends I know have, you know, rediscovered playing the piano or they've rediscovered talents that they haven't done for 10 or 20 years. So it's it's good in that way because we are sort of coming out a little bit more self-assured about who we are um but then it's got the downside where we're a bit isolated and we don't have the you know the friend network and the the employee network around us so it is difficult um and one of the things i loved um is working in big teams where we all sit around a boardroom table and we share ideas and you know just to be in the same room as a group of people it's just so great isn't it it makes you kind of miss kind of the things you take for granted as well yeah. um just like being able to just you know just go to a random cafe with your family i mean honestly how many how many times has someone actually you know turned around and go and took taken their family just to a cafe just to go spend time with them and it makes you realize well you know, time really is of the essence and there is, you know, some really important things that I should be doing, which one of them should be, you know, spending time with your family. And I think when it's taken away, it's not until you realise, oh, I took those things for granted. Mm -hmm. I, I really kind of downplayed the requirement for me to go see my friends, to go see mm -hmm. my family, for me to go out and just do some general activity. Like right now, I, I wasn't really much of a pub person, but right now I'll be, I'm dying to go down the pub just in the beer garden. <laughs> I know, and hopefully by the time the sun's shining again, we can do that. Um, yeah. And I think definitely even like music concerts and, you know, all that side of things, it's just, yeah, it's amazing what we had in our lives. And now that we suddenly have very little, it's it's strange, isn't it? It's really, yeah, it's a strange way. But um, so so thank you, JJ. We've got, um, we, any questions for JJ and myself, please um, comment on the feed. Um, what, if you could give maybe a few pieces of advice for anyone that's really struggling at the minute, what what would you say to them? So this is gonna like come from the heart, but don't compare yourself to people. You know, you, you spend your time on social media and you all you see is success happiness and everything like that you don't see what was behind the scenes and, and i think that paints a quite a false picture on um how we should perceive um social media and how we should perceive the industry it's not full of successes you are going to fail just take just accept it and mm. learn from your failure i mean i failed thousands of thousands of times i've failed interviews i've failed exams um and it just it comes second nature. You, you realize that failure is a stepping stone to success. Mm -hmm. So don't try and compare yourself to other, others. What you're trying to do is become better than the person you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. That should be your ultimate goal. Only compete against yourself. If you do need help and you are starting to go under, just ask somebody, talk to somebody. And even if you don't want to talk to friends and family because it may be private, there's some anonymous help numbers out there that can give you that support that you need. Um, it's, it's very well worth it. And if you are in a dark place, I, I really do think you should go seek some help as soon as possible because it's very important that you look after your mental health more than your physical health. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, is there anything within your industry, essentially, that you've you've used as a real comfort for the last 12 months? Any associations or web pages or, you know, that sort of thing? So for me, it's been the case of jumping onto some you know, communities on uh, there's a 
a chat application called Discord, which basically has loads of different communities on which you can jump into and just talk to people. Mm -hmm. That for me has become very much a kind of support mechanism mm -hmm. where if you've had a bad day, you can just talk to people and people can, you know, just chat, just mm -hmm. general rubbish really about the day, you know, you're chatting mm -hmm. about your industry, chatting about life. Um, it's quite funny, really, because I started talking to a few people on there, uh, and now we have a kind of like an Xbox gang going on. So we just jump yeah. on a game together, and it, it's kind of amazing how jumping into these communities kind of evolves, kind of into kind of more uh, a better relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I do recommend to people if they can, um, if you're on your own, jump into um, jump into a server, jump into a community, just start talking to people. Uh, it's amazing who you meet as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And I'm sure you won't mind if I say that you're um, on LinkedIn, your profile's on LinkedIn. So if anyone wants to connect with you and ask any questions offline, then, you know, you'd be more than welcome to yeah. to advise. Um, and it's been a real pleasure to, to talk to you. We've we've had no questions, sadly, but, uh, you know, I think we've, we've both probably said um, quite a lot on the subject. Um, is there anything else you want to add, JJ? Uh, I think I will leave the kind of exiting comments as look after each other and look after yourselves and be there for each other. Yeah, no, that's that's um, good advice. And and hopefully, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we've we've gone through probably the worst, haven't we, over the last 12 months? And, you know, um, yeah, hopefully by the summer we'll be all, as you say, in beer gardens smiling listening to music <laughs> and really enjoying the atmosphere so so thank you so much jj um and as i say you're available on linkedin if anyone wants to um send me any questions that i can relay back to jj then please feel free to do so um and stay tuned this week for a webinar tomorrow on um how to um think like a hacker and also we have our cyber security quiz happening as well just before the awards um, on Thursday evening as well so thank you so much JJ and um, I, I hope that the next time we talk that um, we'll be out in the sunshine <laughs> <laughs> you're more than welcome I hope so too just around the corner yes definitely thank you and have a lovely week take care take care